Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for watching and tuning in. Come back. Uh, all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going great so far. Mine is. Um, I spoke to someone earlier today. I was out and about doing some things and they happened to say that they lived in Germany uh, many years ago. So I got home and I sort of dug into my Germany album and started playing around with photos. And I'm in Luminar 3 and I'm just trying to make some magic. So um, I'm going to walk through kind of a creative implementation of a few things that uh, I did to a particular photo from Germany. So let me start out by showing you the photo. Here you go. Now this is the cropped version, obviously cropped at 16 by 9. But I put in a new sky, I added some filters, I did a bunch of stuff, and I turned it into that. So I'm going to reset everything that I did and then walk you through the steps that I took to go from that photo to this one, and we're going to start it right now. Okay, here we are. Here's the base photo. So this was Rotenburg, Germany. Uh, one evening, a car was coming down the road, all that stuff. I did crop it, I'll show you, and I probably straightened it. Yeah, my photos are always crooked. Yeah, so uh, straightened a little bit and cropped it to get rid of some of the foreground. And I went with a 16 by nine crop, simply because I love that crop. So um, that was that. Now, the first thing I did, this is the base layer with the raw file. And what I wanted to do is replace the sky. So that was step number one. Now, I made a video, I think it's that, yeah, it's that corner, um, a long time ago, a year ago, two years ago, I don't know. Anyway, it was about this amazing sky replacement technique that you can use in Luminar, and so I'm going to use that technique in this video, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, so if you really want to dive in, watch that video. But um, while the masking and that sort of thing in Luminar is not perfect or super advanced, admittedly, um, it is powerful and you have some great options, especially this um, option or this technique is really useful when you have a sky like this one in this photo, which is either completely blown out and already purely white, or it's purely blue and you can change it to white. So this one's kind of in between. And that other video is actually from this exact same city. Um, and in fact, in fact, the exact same scene, just a different photo. But um, in that one, I had a pure blue sky. This one, I have kind of an in-betweener. But anyway, what I what you do is you add a new layer. You don't even do anything on the base layer. And on that new layer, you add black and white conversion. And all you're trying to do is make the sky incredibly white. So added the black and white filter. I took the luminance down on every color except for the cyan and blue because those are the colors that are present in the sky and I increase the luminance on those all the way to the right. Then I jacked the contrast all the way to the right and the highlights all the way to the right, took the shadows and blacks all the way to the left and the whites all the way to the right. All I'm trying to do, as I said, is create a blown out, purely, perfectly white sky, which I've basically done. Now, the next thing I'm trying to do is I'll add the curves filter and as you can see, I've done a, a pretty substantial job here of just dragging the curves um, all the way to the right. So all I'm trying to do is create a super dark silhouette photo. So, okay, so after creating all that, I realized I had a little bit of a, I thought I had an issue here, but I didn't. And I'll explain why in just a second. What I did is with the curves tool is I dragged the, uh, uh, it starts out like that, right, basically, and I took the bottom and dragged it all the way to the right, and all I'm trying to do is just completely crush the blacks, make it as black as possible in the dark areas, and um, create as much contrast as possible between the sky, which is now white, and the rest of the photo, which is black, except it doesn't look black to you, and that's because what I did is, after I completely turned it black, I went in here and clicked on luminosity mask, and created a luminosity mask for the layer, which is present, so you're just seeing uh, the white sky. Let me show you what the mask looks like. Here we go. Um, you can see that what that does is create a perfect or nearly perfect mask. There were a couple of spots here, like the headlights, that actually had the um, kind of the red in it, right? The, the mask was applying to the headlights, and I just took the erase tool and erased it. So again, this is not a detailed tutorial on that. You can check out that video that I talked about. But all I did is create a perfectly white sky um, and a perfectly black foreground. A luminosity mask was then created, which made the sky white and the foreground look normal. And then I'm ready to go. So what I did is I went to the layer button up here, the gear icon, and I said mask copy. And then I went and added a new image layer um, and that image layer was this sky. And then I went here to this gear icon and said mask uh, paste, which I can't do because I'm not doing it currently. And it pasted this sky in there. 
The cool thing about um, adding a new layer as a sky is you can also go in and get the free transform tool and then move that sky around. As you can see, you can see that my sky is currently sitting a little bit off center, right? And that's because I moved it around. So this is a sky I shot in Austin. I've used it on several videos in the past. It's just a lovely sky. But the point here is that the free transform tool allows you to move that around. And what I wanted was more of that color and those clouds in the sky as opposed to, it was it was covering up more of the, the base uh, image itself. So. I just moved it to get more of it into the sky because the sky in this photo from Germany is a smaller piece of the entire image. I hope that all makes sense. Again, watch that video to understand better how to do it. Uh, the next thing I did was add a new uh, adjustment layer and I stuck a preset on there and that preset created a much different look. Let me show you the before and after. So here's the before. Um, to me, kind of mismatched tones. Um, the sky has some nice blue and some, I mean, sunset colors in it. And the foreground um, and the buildings don't have as much. And so I chose this preset because it has a little bit more blue in it. And if you're curious, I, I was in my London Calling preset pack and the one that I chose is called Night on the Streets. Um, and I stuck that on there and um, it worked really well. I think I adjusted the opacity as well. So at this point I was like, all right, I think a cool scene to start with. I love, I just love architecture and cityscapes like this. So I have that. Secondly, I have a new sky, which I think looks great. And thirdly, I've now got a preset on there, which to me is an important step, not the preset, but the step of adding a new adjustment layer after you add the sky, because you want to balance out the tones and the colors to make it look like they go together. I'm personally uh, of the opinion that if you put a new sky in, you should disclose that. Um, but you know that's up to you but however regardless of whether you're disclosing it or not i guess you want to make it look like it belongs together in other words you want to sell it right so that's why i chose this preset i think it helps sell the fact that these two things go together this street scene and this sky even if they were shot uh not even at different times or uh, whatever they were shot in different countries right so um anyway that's that then i went and added another adjustment layer and this one, I started with the develop filter because remember on the base image, that's the raw file. I didn't do anything. So I went and got the develop filter, made a little bit of a contrast adjustment, a slight temperature and tint adjustment. And then I went and got the tone filter. You can see smart tone came in kind of handy here just to lift up the exposure. And I think the colors and things like that are starting to look pretty good. And then I added a vignette. That was just to tighten up the focus on the core center of the image. And I didn't use any inner light. I actually might go back and do a tiny bit of that. I love inner light. It's so awesome. Um, and then I did color temperature. So that was, again, just to kind of make the colors go to be, uh, to, together a little bit better. Um, the sunset sky itself had a little bit more orange to it. I added a preset that had a little bit more blue. This addition of the color temperature was just to create a little bit more blue and a little bit more of that pink tint across the entire image because this was a global adjustment. In other words, it's going over the whole photo. And the last thing I did was this little section right here, there was a light bulb uh, that was burning pretty bright. Um, even in the base photo, you can see in that section, it's pretty, pretty orange. So all I did is I went in here with the saturation and vibrance filter and I just took the saturation way down and I painted it in with a tiny little brush up in there because it was kind of a little bit visually distracting. Let me show you again before and after. That's that. So that was basically to reduce the impact of that um, little bit of that uh, bulb burning bright. And then I did an erased image layer. There's a couple things on the street. There's a couple little bolts or something here on the wall. I took them out and I was done, my friends. That was it. So that was the before. Not a nice sky, you know, cool scene in my opinion, a couple of cars coming. I didn't get a full light trail, which I would have rather have had, but um, I didn't get it. Uh, you got some people walking down the street. I think composition wise, it's not bad. Architecturally, it's beautiful because the city's beautiful, but the sky was a waste. And I think I turned it into something much more interesting. Uh, I think much be better color tones. And of course the sky I'm a fan of because I just like to do these things. So. My point with this one was just to show you that you can make magic in Luminar. Um, I'm in Luminar 3. This is my Luminar 3 library, which if I click on library, you can see I'm in one of my file folders here. But um, that's how it works, my friend. 
uh, friends, plural, because you're all my friends, and I appreciate you coming by and watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up down below with a comment. If you'd share this with your friends, I'd appreciate it. If you don't have Luminar, you can get it at the link below. And uh, let me know what you thought about it. I hope you had a good time watching. I had a good time making it, and I'll see you real soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.